Welcome back, friends. If you haven't been here before, I am Susan Clifton. I'm here in my Baca studio here in Pompano Beach, Florida. I will be moving out in the next couple of weeks, so um, this channel is going to change slightly because I'm probably for a couple of months going to be a little bit homeless in terms of an art studio. Today I want to talk about how to exhibit your artwork. So if, whether you're just starting out or you've been doing this for a while, there are various ways that you can get your work out there so that the public can see it. So stay tuned. If you're just starting out, you know, you've got some paintings finished, you're not sure if they're any good, you would like to get some feedback, either from other artists or for the public in general, I suggest that you join a local art guild. There's usually art centers that are run by cities or um, the county even, and there, there's usually more than one in, in an area. Some of them are specific to the type of medium, like watercolors, or maybe it's mixed media, like different types of art or an oil society or whatever. Those local guilds not only offer additional workshops and things like that to improve your craft, but also business advice possibly, and they usually have monthly shows. Sometimes those shows are juried. Frequently with a the guild, they're not juried. They're, um, you know, for the members only. So once you have like a body of work, you know, decent amount of artwork and, it, and you are confident that people like it, so why not coffee shops and restaurants? So a lot of times they rotate artists, like every two months they bring in a new artist. You, have a, you do have to have enough artwork to fill the space. So coffee shops are usually smaller spaces. Maybe they only have one wall. Maybe they like small art. They do sell, they take a commission. But this can help you get a little taste of what it's like to have um, even a solo show. Other local stuff that you might try are hotel lobbies, theater lobbies, even hair salon. I did actually show my work at a hair salon. It was the guy that was cutting my hair and he suggested it. He was like, Susan, why don't you bring your art? And, you know, so every month I would switch it out and I would bring five or six more paintings and we'd hang them up. Always include different size pieces so that, you know, the average person that wasn't really expecting to see art might say, hey, this is, this is the cost of a dinner. I can afford this. So libraries are a great place to exhibit when you're first starting out. I did that way back in like the first two years that I was painting. I had by that time about 15 paintings and a friend of mine was a manager at a library. She hung them all, all over the library. It was fantastic. And it hung for three months. All of them had a little price tag on it. And if anybody was interested, she would direct them to me, you know, and tell them how to reach me. She had my business cards. And so that's a, another really great type of space. That's a public space for you to show your work. So you definitely should find some juried shows. Now juried shows, there are good ones and there are bad ones. The good ones actually bring on a juror, somebody in the industry who's really highly qualified. They might be a curator at a museum, local museum or one nearby. I would definitely try to get into some juried shows because that really gives you a barometer of whether or not your work is starting to improve. Now, as far as juried shows, you could also do an online juried show. There's old, tons of them all over the country. And let's face it, everybody's doing everything online these days, especially since COVID. Get your work in front of people who haven't seen it before, not just your local community. Give it a try. Now also, once you're really confident that your work sells and that it's well liked, um, art fairs are a good thing. I don't do them because here in South Florida, it is hot. Um, there are indoor art fairs, like during Art Basel, there's places like there's Spectrum Art, um, 
there's quite a few of these what they call satellite shows where the individual artist buys a booth. Now this isn't inexpensive, so you, you have to be very confident that you're going to sell because you want to do more than break even. And that goes for the outside sh uh, shows as well. There's a, a, a very famous uh, outdoor art fair company. I, right now I can't think of the name of it. They charge a lot of money. You have to have your own tent. It has. It's up for the whole weekend. Um, it's exhausting. You have to br bring somebody with you, like a spouse or a best friend, to sit in the booth with you because if not, you will never be able to take a break. Those kinds of shows, and that goes for the indoor ones as well, they are, I know this is sounding very negative, right? I'm not, I don't mean to be negative about it. Some people do very well with these things and it all depends on the type of artwork that you create, the price point of your artwork and whether or not you have the energy to do that. So if you're lucky enough to have a studio like this one, and it's in a center with a group of other artists as well, you could do open studio night. So because we're in a city run building, we're not able to just like, you know, create our own events, but they do one on the first Friday of every month. And we get people coming into our studios, looking at our art, signing up for our mailing list, buying prints, all of the above. And it's, has been a wonderful experience. So don't do an open studio if it's your house, unless there's like a separate entrance into just the studio part and you have good security, you're gonna have people, because you're inviting strangers into your space. You don't want them checking out your house and you know planning a heist in the future. <laughs> but uh, I would just, you know, be careful. So if you could think of anything else, please share it in the comments below. I read all of your comments and I look forward to hearing your ideas. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.